Hello, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, welcome to a new Let's Play from uh, myself, the mysterious JG. I'm a YouTube Let's Player. I play video games for a hobby and project the videos that I record onto the internet so that people can tell me how awesome I am and how I'm the worst player in the world or whatever feeling it is they wish to share. Uh, as some of you will already know, uh, and some of you are only finding out for the first time, I am an American who has come into possession of, during a trip to Japan, a copy of um, Romance of the Three Kingdoms 12, or Sangoku 12, whatever the heck it's actually called in Japanese. And uh, through the magic of uh, English language patches, unfortunately these patches have not really improved since I did my special 90 minutes of just game playing around video, uh, probably over a year ago at this point. But um, I am going to go ahead and start a Let's Play adventure where I go through an entire campaign of Romance of Three Kingdoms 12. So I hope you guys will, will enjoy. And uh, I'm going to start the program. And uh, I have decided, although this is not my normal pattern, I am going to be quiet during the opening cinematic and let you guys watch that. And I'll join you again when the opening cinematic is completed. So get ready for some RTK 12. There you go, folks. That was the intro. I wanted to give you guys at least one chance to listen to the intro without me cracking jokes. Back in my uh, Let's Play RTK12 for in English for 90 Minutes video, which I have since seen through while well, Google searching for uh, information on this game, I found people using my video without my permission. I'm like, okay, okay, fine, whatever. I I can't imagine you're making a lot of money off of this, and if you are, I can't imagine I can stop you because you're, you know, obviously just using copyrighted stuff without permission all over the place. But no, I have seen that video up uh, and around, uh, even on foreign language websites. It's kind of interesting. <laughs> and um, in the opening, when the opening movie played that time, I just being an LP -er who, you know, has a, a, a small but loyal following on my channel and have done these kinds of videos before was cracking jokes during the intro movie and suddenly all these people who were not familiar with me and possibly even not familiar with the hobby were just jumping in all over the place and being confused. There was a sequence where Zhuge Liang first appears and having played many Koai games on my channel before I kind of made a joke of not knowing it's like 
Who's this guy? He seems familiar. I can't imagine. Have we seen him before? Because, of course, he's, he's been one of the main characters in many, many uh, other series that I've played. But people didn't get that. I was kidding. The big thing was that you may recall in that cinematic, Guan Yu slams Blue Dragon into the earth and creates a super earthquake that appears to destroy Cao Cao's entire army as he flees from Chur B. And I said, I, I believe my exact words are something... Well, maybe not my exact words, but I, I said something along the lines of, and that's that's what happened. Uh, Guan Yu used his godlike combat powers to kill Cao Cao at the Battle of Chirbi. Uh, check it out. It's in the novel. It's, it's history. It really happened. I had dozens and dozens of people, in all seriousness, commenting to tell me that I was incorrect and that I was... <laughs> Varying levels of rudeness and politeness to tell me, no, actually, Guan Yu doesn't kill Cao Cao at Chirby. I'm like, yeah, I, I, I knew. Even had a guy who like, came in, multiple posts along the subject. By the end, he was insulting the entire nation of America, which has like 300 million people, all because I made a joke. So, Just be prepared for the fact, folks, that I will sometimes attempt to inject a little levity into this LP. I hope you will enjoy it when I do, but if you don't always understand my humor, especially if um, you are an international viewer, English may not be your first language, just, you know, you're not going to get every single thing that I say, and it's not a problem. We are all can still be friends, okay? All right. Continuing along, uh, I'm using a different recording setup from the one I used when I recorded that video, so the colors may be different. It should be higher resolution. Uh, I'm going to do probably a few videos this way before I decide which setting I like, and I might switch. You might see a rather abrupt change in the video style, but um, still, uh, unless you own your own copy of the game and can play it for yourself, this is probably going to be the best you're going to be able to get, so sorry for that. Uh, what else? I don't want to spend ten minutes doing caveats before we get started, but this is going to be a long LP, so I feel like I can talk for a little. I would also just like to say I am neither the best nor the worst uh, strategy gamer ever. Um, I, I just play them for fun. I don't claim to be a pro. I'm sure there are people out there who are worse than me, but, you know, if you think that you're better than me, um, that's fine, you know? That's, that's cool. Hopefully I'll get less obnoxious commentary uh, than you might get in some games because I think a lot of the people watching this game won't be that familiar with it and they'll be learning it as as I learn it as we go through. But um, if you're going to correct my gameplay or tell me what I should be doing different, just please try to be polite about it. I'm a lot more likely to actually listen to you. I'm also going to be recording many videos in uh, one shot and uploading one video at a time. So I will not probably be able to respond to comments and suggestions in the next video after they appear. Be, be aware, that doesn't mean that I don't want your feedback and appreciate people interacting. It's just the nature of my personal life and my schedule and when I can record games. So other people will record six hours in one day and upload six hours in one day and then not play or upload for a week. I'm much more likely to, uh, to record several hours on a day when I have time, and then stagger them. So, again, you're going to have to deal. Last little caveat before we get started. Um, that's me just making caveats about myself and my gameplay style. There will be another little caveat about the translation uh, of the game and the fact that it is not perfect either. I am not a native Chinese speaker. I am not really a non-native Chinese speaker. I don't know Chinese. And that includes the fact that I don't probably pronounce Chinese names correctly. Beyond merely having an accent, I simply don't know how words are meant to be said, period. For example, there's a, a character, an officer, named Ji Hao Dun. At least that's what I call him. I'm probably way, way wrong. Zhang Liao. That's probably totally wrong the way I just said that. Cao Cao. I think I got Cao Cao right point is, I'm not a Chinese speaker, and if, like, it causes you pain to hear the names tortured by my ignorant Yankee American way of pronouncing them, I'm sorry, I'm just telling you up front, it's not going to improve as the LP goes on, so just be advised. I'm just laying that out there up front. I, usually on the RTK ones, not the Dynasty Warriors ones, the RTK fans are 
a little bit more hardcore and serious about it. I'm always getting people commenting, LOL, your pronunciations are so funny. I'm like, okay, you know, if it amuses you and it's not causing you pain, uh, that's fine. But no, and um, commenting to tell me that I'm doing it wrong is probably not going to help me. And attempting through comments to educate me and correct my pronunciation by coaching me through text comments on YouTube, that ain't going to work neither. Uh, nothing short of me actually getting a tutor that I can actually speak to in real life, you know, in person, or is 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 really going to help. And I'm not willing to go there. I'm a video game player hobbyist who is not making any money off of this. So just throwing that out there. That's that's as good as it's going to get. All right. So oh, I guess another caveat. I have played two previous RTK games on the interwebs. Uh, I think I was the first person to get and complete an RTK 10 Let's Play, Grimith, uh, at the request of a subscriber, and he seemed pretty, and he seemed like he felt kind of bad about it too. But he came afterwards, stole my thunder a bit, had a really popular Let's Play of the RTK 10 with the uh, booster pack, but it was like not really translated, so he was just playing the menus from memory. So those two are both out there, but I referenced mine because in mine I ha I gave people the opportunity who were subscribers and viewers on my channel could send me uh, the, the stats for their created officers and I was going to create officers. I did the same thing with actually the earlier LP uh, of Romance of Three Kingdoms 11. And I took your characters that you created and you gave them names and I let you pick stats you know, with certain conditions attached, and I dropped them into the game at random, and they popped up on forces, and I think a lot of people enjoyed that. I I can't do that in this game. Uh, I was seriously thinking about not doing it anyway, because I'm expecting to have a lot more interest in this one, since this is a game that you literally can't go out and buy for yourself if you are a, you know, English speaking, I shouldn't say English speaking, there's English speakers all over the world, but if you're a gamer, most of my most of my people who watch my channel are from uh, North America, just a few Europeans thrown in there, the people who are typically watching my LP, and South Africa and Australia too, you're, you're not going to be able to get your hands on this game easily, so I'm expecting to have a lot of people watching just for that reason, so I'd have a lot more people interested in doing it, it would get crowded, but the real reason is this. The uh, editing in this game, now this game, and I, I want to give thanks to the people who created the patch, although I'd have to go look up what their names are because I didn't think about that in advance. But um, basically the parameters they were working with is that this game is written in, I guess, kanji, I think? There's more than one written Japanese alphabet. I tend to get them confused. But um, there's a written Japanese alphabet where each uh, script you know, written script character carries an entire syllable's worth of sound and information, rather than the Roman alphabet in which each letter is basically a single sound. So, like a syllable in uh, with the Roman alphabet would be something like uh, S Y B Sib. I don't know why I came up with that one. I was trying to say syllable, but um, I kind of spelled it wrong. But like, yeah, here we go. Bo B O W A O Bo baby. Bo would be a single syllable, but in um, Japanese, that syllable might be uh, just one letter, or one letter with an accent mark, to indicate that it's a slightly different pronunciation of a letter that would normally mean bow. See what I'm saying? So in this game, if I were to, like, uh, randomly create a new character, their name is going to be written in kanji. If I go and try to change those, I can change those to, he's going to be, uh, JG Mystery. Oh, hey, have you noticed? The confirm button just went away. This game will not allow you to use those, uh, these symbols as inputs for a name. Throughout the game, backing out, throughout the game, you're going to see stuff written in Roman uh, letters. That is because somebody went in and wrote something which actually replaces text that was originally written in kanji and replaces them with Roman letters. And for that same reason, we are frequently going to see proper nouns, place names, character names, which are made up of like these sort of crudely abbreviated versions. Zhang Liao becomes like 
Jun Liao, Jun Lao, because there isn't enough room. The uh, the space that is is used for character names only has room for a certain number of characters because those characters are meant to be kanji, not Roman letters. Probably bored you guys to tears, but. What I'm getting at is, A, that's a big part of why this game, uh, English translation, is not perfect and has problems, especially as far as the proper nouns go. And B, it's why I can't do officer creation. I was leaning towards not doing it anyway, because I knew that so many more people were probably going to end up watching this one eventually, that if I gave, like, just 20, 25 people a chance to participate up front, it would really not represent very many of the people who watch. But B, I can't do it anyway, so... I got out of it, I guess. In theory, I could auto set, and then I could just say, okay, when we see this guy, that's going to be Fulter Bobo, and when we see this guy, that's going to be Falger. Nah, I, nah, I couldn't, couldn't go for it. Especially because uh, when you actually get into it, there's really not that many created officers' faces uh, to work with in this game compared to previous games. It is a reduced number, and nobody really looks like Vulture Bobo anyway of the created officer guys. It's kind of sad. Vulture Bobo had the great like crazy man beard. There's really none of these guys. I mean, could that be Vulture Bobo? I suppose, but he doesn't have like the kind of crazy huge beard. Of Actually, this guy wouldn't be a bad Vulture Bobo. Oh, it's not Vulture Bobo I couldn't make. I was flipping around the other day, trying to figure out who would I pick for Falger. There are no bald characters in this. I would have to go pick a historical officer's face. There's no baldies. Craziness. It's also seven pages for the Ji Hao Dune daughter. There's always, like, a female with an eye patch. I don't really get why they always go for that look, but whatever. All right. So we're backing out of here. We are instead going to go to a new game. Actually, real quick, I'll show you the games I've already been playing around with. I won the game with is Yuan Shao on Easy. This is actually not the same game that you saw me start with the 90-minute video. I got to a point in that one where the game was unwinnable because I had stalemated with Cao Cao while Sun Tzu had taken over most of China. So Sun Tzu held about... Uh, probably about two-thirds of China, while Cao Cao and I each held about one-sixth of China. And as you will see as we continue in this game, that is not a position from which either Cao Cao or I would be able to recover. Sun Tzu had too many resources. I'm playing as Sun Tzu on hard, and I'm going to just let this one go, because while I appear to be doing well uh, on that little preview map there, in fact, uh, those are fairly small cities that don't have a lot of productivity, and... Uh, Cao Cao and Liu Bei have aligned, and I just got to a position where I, was, I wasn't really having that much fun. Uh, my difficulty on the hard difficulty level mostly has to do with the computer AI's use of tactics and strategy, and that is one of the aspects of gameplay I don't understand very well because none of the tutorials are translated into English, and I haven't been able to find any kind of English language facts or anything. So I've pretty much been piecing it together as I've gone. I've learned, I think most of how this game works, but that part I just don't get, and it makes it kind of difficult on the hardest difficulty level. Started a game just the other day with uh, Wing Ho, just, just messing around, just killing. Uh, there was something on TV that I was only half interested in, I fiddled with that, but I'm not really intending to finish it. And uh, this is another slot for Sensu. But what we're actually going to do, I've beaten it on easy, I've beaten it on normal, I haven't beaten it on hard yet, but, because this is mostly just me playing through the game for fun now, and uh, giving you, gentle viewer, the viewer at home, a chance to join me and watch me on this adventure, I... It's tempting to try to do it on hard, but I just think I'd get frustrated, because I... You know, you're, you're going to see as we go that uh, there's a lot of stuff about the game that you, you, I haven't quite figured out. And uh, also, when I went on normal, I was able to load if I made a mistake, something I'm going to try very hard not to do in this Let's Play version. I'm going to try to just roll with it if I suffer setbacks and try to recover from them, rather than just consistently load if things don't go my way. But it is easy to screw up in this game in certain ways, so I'm just going to play on normal. And, uh, man, we're going to even get started before this is over. We've got several scenarios to choose from. If you want to see me reading the descriptions, you can go back to my previous video. 
In fact, uh, I did try to roll an upgrade my patch. It didn't seem to help with the translations. Rather than having better translations, they're just adding new stuff, like Nobunaga's ambition uh, version of the Rise of Heroes scenario, where there are forces made up with characters from Nobunaga's ambition. And then this Battle of GOP... Um... Boo was defeated in the battle and subsequently executed South Sao's orders. I guess this is just a different starting point that's very similar to... Yeah, they've added a couple of new starting points that weren't part of the traditional game. This one, I don't even, you know, it's not translated into English at all, so I, I don't know what it is. But the uh, version that I, the one I intended to do was the Rival Warlord scenario. This is always one of my favorite starting scenarios. This is essentially the scenario that I played in RTK-10, and I uh, played through the rise of Sun Tzu's force, uh, the establishment more or less of Wu. Uh, it's the earliest scenario where you can play as Cao Cao, starting in the area that Cao Cao is kind of known. Well, I guess you could play the Dong Zhou scenario. Dong Zhuo. But um, in this one, we're more like the, the starting point I'm used to. You've got Sun Tzu getting started and you've got Lu Bu having his own force as opposed to Dong Zhuo having a large force in the west Lu Bu has kind of a smallish force in the east and uh, Yuan Shao has established himself as being your principal threat that's the place I'm gonna start from in theory I could also have started from Dong Zhuo scenario and I could have played as Cao Cao there I could have started uh, at Guangdu where it's right before the big showdown between Yuan Shao and Cao Cao. I prefer to, to roll from here. So we're going to go ahead and do that. We have Cao Cao. He has two cities, 24 officers. Decent amount of food and troops. He actually has one of the better starting positions. Yuan Shao obviously has a much better starting position for food and troops. Uh, he has more officers. Cao Cao actually has a higher... Uh, quality of officer core than uh, Yuan Shao does, though Yuan Shao does have some excellent officers. Starting as Lu Bu is a real challenge because there's no easy direction in which to expand. I have played uh, RTK 11 through as Lu Bu's force. It was a lot of fun, but that's not what I'm intending to do here. And of course, you can always start as Liu Bei, although when I'm playing as him, I prefer scenarios where he starts down here so I can kind of establish Shu. It's very difficult to actually follow the plot events through without changing something just in your day-to-day -day procedures that prevents the plot events from shaking out. Because there are narrative pre-scripted kind of program plot events that will occur. But, uh... They just don't tend to happen. Like, unless you're just doing nothing with every turn, uh, you'll always do something that'll screw it up and prevent a plot event from coming up on its own. And in fact, as we play through with Cao Cao, if you kind of don't expand much and you just build up, build your cities and, and don't go to war, plot events will happen. And uh, I've seen while playing um, on hard mode as Sun Tzu and not being involved with what was going on up here, plot events unraveled by themselves, including accompanied by narrative text and pictures, the same way that they would be in previous games, that saw... Cao Cao taking over Lu Bu's territory and executing him after, you know, trading back and forth between Lu Bu and uh, Liu Bei, and Liu Bei ends up getting his, uh, fleeing from Cao Cao and taking over whatever the city here is called on behalf of Liu Biao, and all this stuff is going on, not with, like, the computer forces, the AI forces fighting each other and making it happen, but they start just clicking off, happening automatically as plot events. But if I play as Cao Cao, and I do that, it will actually work out to my advantage in one respect, because Cao Cao ends up with a decent chunk of territory by the time all that's done. He was, after all, once he defeated Yuan Shao, sort of meant to be set up to be inevitably the ruler of China, and it's only a um, pretty disastrous defeat of Chirby that prevented it. But as I play, I'm probably not going to have the patience to just sit back and let the plot events unfold for themselves. Apologies to anybody who really wants to see the plot events, but it basically takes the, the you know, it's a series of, st of still pictures with text that won't be translated, so I don't think you're missing too, too much there. But, um, you know what, maybe what I'll do 
So we don't really have that much time left in this first video because of all the introductory stuff. So we won't really get rolling until the next video of the LP. So how about I just click in and we go through no life at all? That would be no life and death. No, let's not do that. Let's do boost. Uh, so officers will live longer than they're meant to, which is you know nice, especially if you want to win with your first set of guys. Uh, women will appear as officers. Officers will work for the forces that they were known to work for. Uh, sorry, a little phone issue there. Historical events. Setting historical events, yes or no? We'll put on yes. I didn't know it had been taken off of that. Commentary. We will get a description of game rules, etc. I'll leave that on just so you can see to fulfill our curiosity as to when a tutorial would come up, although we won't be able to do it to figure it out. No means nobody dies. Many means they die frequently. I leave it on normal. i never really seen officers die, um, except when I played on hard mode. It seemed to happen in a couple of battles. Everything else will be set on normal. Uh, we will only watch our forces' battles. We can use a mouse or touchscreen because this game did come out for portable touchscreen touchscreen computers and touchscreen systems in Japan. And as you will see when we get into it, if you are an aficionado of older RTK games, this is a fairly simplistic game. That that suits me down to the ground since the English translation isn't, you know, absolutely perfect. It makes it so that I was able to sort of figure it out. Average combat speed, blah, blah, blah. We're not going to do it. Yes, I can shoot. Okay. That's the speed. Da, 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 I think we are good. So what I'm going to do here, actually, folks, is I'm going to save the game as soon as we get rolling, and then I'm going to kill a couple of turns just to show... I'm just going to, like, not do anything and let you guys see the first historical event so that you can see how those work. And then we're probably just going to actually load, and uh, from now on, instead of trying to let historical events play out, I'm just going to try to win the game as best I can. So... Let's move along. It was the year something or other. Cao Cao and Sun Jin, is that maybe it's Sun Jin? I don't know. They just kind of stood around and watched Yuan Shao waving to a crowd because he was the commander of the force that destroyed Dong Zhuo and all the minions. Dong Zhuo ended up getting killed by Lu Bu because Lu Bu wanted to do Diao Chan. Yuan Chao then was like, yeah, yeah, I'm going to take credit for that victory. Oh, yeah. But Cao Cao was like, look, dude, I did the whole thing with the jeweled knife, and I ran away, and I I killed my father's born brother and said something about how I would rather betray the world than let the world betray me, and I totally deserve the rule land more than you do. Lu Bu was like, Argh! Meanwhile, in GIP, Liu Bei went around talking about the Han and trying to, like, looks like he's trying to cop a feel on the lady. And Sun Tzu exists, and he's striking Randy Orton poses while... Or is it more like that, you know, Napoleon on the back of a charging steed? Either way, Sun Jin's dead at this point, so he's kind of wants to take out get his revenge on Liu Biao, but he pretty much just wants to rule China. And he's got the Jade Seal, too. And the same bandits who have been threatening cities since at least RTK-10 are still threatening cities. It was a time of great heroes, folks. And Guojia is here. Guojia is a... He's a character that I don't really know as much about as I probably should, because, like a lot of fans, I've, I've read the novels, folks. I do not have a perfect knowledge and memory of all the characters and all the events, but I've read the novel uh, more than once, actually, in translation, of course. And Guojia is a pretty badass strategist. He dies quite young. But, um... I think the first Koai game, uh, he shows up in Dynasty Warriors 7 uh, expansion pack, and I was an Xbox 360 guy instead of a PS3 guy, so I got hosed there. 
And now he's in Dynasty Warriors 8, which I never bothered to buy because it's like, look, didn't Dynasty Warriors 7? Hasn't that been out for less than a year? So, I haven't really got to see the, like, the young, hot, Bishonen Guogia, <laughs> but I do know that he's, uh, he's not somebody you want to fuck around with. He's, he's a really capable officer, and he's going to try to teach us how to play the game, but he's going to fail because we don't read Japanese. At least I don't. So he's like, Tao Tao, talk to the hand. Hey, Tao Tao. Um, there's an orange box over there. There's another orange box. This one's around a little, like, icon of a castle. Maybe it's, like, uh, going to be a Defender of the Crown thing. You're going to have to, like, defeat the Saxons or the Normans, whichever one you're not. And then Cinema Warrior games, like, three suits pop up. There's also Gears. Gears of War. This game, like Mass Effect, is going to become more like Gears of War as it continues. So, Tao Tao, I'm asking you a yes-no question. What do you say? Without knowing what the question is... I'm gonna go with yes. Tao Tao, you must govern effectively or, you know, gonna lose. Lu Bu! Oh, he's probably telling us who our main rivals are. Lu Bu is, I believe, our sworn enemy at this point. Yu Wan Xiao is our ally, technically, at this point. I don't really remember why that would be. I guess Yu Wan Xiao and Tao Tao were allied up until, you know, around the time of Guan Du. So here's our capital, Tao Tao City, USA. Uh, you know, there were people who were irritated with me and my inability to remember where cities were on the map in earlier RTK games. Well, it's going to be pretty hard now because we've only got, like, generally three or four letters to use to identify each city. Wu works out okay. Ye and Yi are up here someplace. Yeah, Ye and G. I'm sure I'm pronouncing those wrong, but no, we're gonna have some. We're gonna have some trouble here. I'm pretty sure that that's uh, Ji Hao Yuan as the uh, leader in Zhu Chang, but Cao Cao. I honestly don't remember what city this is. It's H Li, <laughs> and uh, Lu Bu's up there in Ouya. I think that's Pu Yang. I don't know. <laughs> Wan. I know Wan. And the really bad one is I really should know uh, these cities because this is where this is where like Liu Bei gets his start, and I played through as him. I, I don't know, I don't know. But if we go into Zhu Chang, what I'm gonna do is listen to some more tutorial stuff that I don't understand. He's telling us at this point empty, like any place you see, just like a a little touristy uh, arch that you're supposed to take pictures of with your brother. You're actually supposed to build stuff there. He's probably explaining the different things we can build. He is telling us that different cities have their specialties. Honestly, this is one of those things I just ignore. Like, this is a commerce city. I'm sure that has something to do with gold income. I don't... I don't know. Couldn't be bothered to track it in detail. Other people, if they want to, can try to pay really close attention to the numbers and see what that means. Uh, that's a market. I guess he's telling us about what markets do. Cow cow, or tau tau, or if you're, um... LP, or whose name I can't remember, used to refer to him as K.O.K.O. -K -O. Which is, you know, kind of wrong. There's some shoe dudes, and the shoe world ordered over there. There is a finder, a finder of lost love, so you use that to recruit people and also search for items. We'll get to all this later. At what point do I get to do stuff? I get to do stuff now. Okay. So I'm going to save my game. And I'll go ahead and save... Uh, I'm probably just going to alternate between all these slots, so I'll save right here over Yuan Shao, even though, as you can see... You want Shao is a great slot to use if I want to just win the game quick, fast. Maybe I'll save it since instead. I don't think I'm going to try to pick that game back up. If I really want to, I'll start over on new one. So there's Cao Cao. What we are going to do is end our turn without doing anything, so we can get the next turn as soon as possible. And hopefully you guys can see a cinematic story uh, thing. Because I want you guys to see at least one of those to see how they work, because I don't plan to actually get many. I'm going to start expanding on my own recognizance soon enough, 
And one of the main reasons I don't want to play the story through uh, is because I actually want to uh, recruit Lu Bu when we defeat, defeat him. Because he's a very useful general. And while obviously that's out of character for what happens in the novel, uh, in this game it's simple enough to keep Lu Bu happy and satisfied so he doesn't betray your force and he just goes around and kills dudes on your behalf. Uh, nobody else in the Empire seems to have a Jiao Chan they can produce to... Uh, turn Lubu against him. So let's end the turn without doing anything. It's telling us, what the fuck are you doing? You haven't done anything. But are you sure you want to end the turn? Yes. You want to shout at something? Tao Kyan and Liu Bei are fuckers. <laughs> and no matter what they say, I blame them for the death of my father. Liu Bei! Fuck you, motherfucker! Liu Bei! You and your, like, weak sauce pretending to be too virtuous to take over Chao Kwan's territory. I'm gonna kill you both. I'm gonna kill the peasants, I'm gonna salt the earth. I'm just, I'm angry. Uh, Tsao Tsao, you should probably use, like, strategy or something. Uh, strategy? Okay, sure. Yeah, uh, why don't we use this, the tiger catches the twin dragons. I don't know what the fuck strategy is. He's some kind of strategy that has tigers and dragons in the name. And then, uh... Oh, no, I remember... Okay, sorry, I remember what he actually said at this point. It was like, Tsao Tsao, if we go, like, fucking attacking Chao Quain, uh, Lu Bu's gonna come, like, take over our, you know, our territory while we're g our whole army's gone. I don't care. I fucking want to kill Chao Quain. I blame him for the death of my father, and I'm nothing if not a, you know, a filial son. At least that's what I tell people. Duh, I will protect this land from Lupu. <laughs> so, Cao Cao's army rides out to fight Chao Quan, but Lupu pops up as soon as he's gone. It's like, Cao Cao, I have the loyalty of a dog. Except the dogs are actually known to be loyal, so. Never mind. But I'm taking over your shit. Oh, no, you're not, Lupu. Yes, I am. King, claw, clash, fight. Hey, what are you doing? It's my territory. Don't try to take it over. Ah, oh, Juju, I don't remember which one of us won this fight. Fiji's memory ain't that hot. But I am taking over Puyan. Or maybe I'm losing Puyan. We are peasants. We're the people. We have something to say about Tao Tao that isn't translated. Oh, I'm Lu Bu. I'm a talking like JG the Big Shang Fei talk. Yeah, I'm Chang Gong. Lu Bu, I can't remember if I betray you or not, but I, I'm pretty sure I actually don't betray you, so trust me. I, 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 JG thinks I'm the guy who was riding with Tao Tao when he killed his father's sworn brother, but Lu Bai Shi, I... You know what, JG should do research before he starts recording next time. But anyway, let's go to GRP. Yeah, and from there we'll take over the world. And you go kill cowboys like you always wanted to. Yes, killing cowboys. Ah, oh, no, wait. Uh, I'll take... Oh, okay, wait, wait, no. I think I'm remembering what happened. <laughs> Sorry, folks. Lubu, I think, attacked Tao Tao, but Tao Tao drove him out. And then, uh... Liu Bei, like, Lu Bu ended up taking a city from Liu Bei and all the confusion. I believe that's what actually happened. Or, no, he went to he went to Liu Bei to, like, uh, seek refuge. Yeah, yeah. It's like, hey, I'm Fatty McGee. <laughs> I don't even know who this is. <laughs> it's Fatty McGee. Shan Miao, I suppose. Uh, I told you I'd read the novel. I didn't tell you. I, I remember everything. Lu Bu! Lu Bu! So there's a picture that I thought before was of Cao Cao and Yuan Shao, but I'm no longer sure that's what's meant to be going on at all. I am the Herald. I wanted to tell you Lu Bu... Ah, Lu Bu is here. I'm a sucker. I'm sure he has nothing but good intentions. Send him in. Oh, don't trust Lu Bu. Oh, best of three fathers. Oh. Tend to agree with my brother on this one. Shut the fuck up. I'm in charge here. Although I'm really not as t 
tough as either of you, or not particularly smart. I, I, I care a lot about the Han, and therefore you guys should listen to me, and I trust Lubu implicitly. So shut up. Oh, I am the mightiest warrior ever. I betrayed everyone I ever worked for, but I'm not going to betray you. Yeah, great. I never thought you would, not for one second. I can't do anything but be hospitable to my new guest. Boo boo, you're a good guy. Thanks, little brother. Oh, fucking hell. What did you just call him, brother, brother? Shang Fei, calm down. Just because you're actually my sworn brother and he's an asshole who killed everyone he's ever worked for, there's no reason to overreact. <laughs> I've got parchment, which means I'm a strategist. Okay, <laughs> I, I recognize that. I'm going to put you in charge of GFP, because I don't foresee that you could ever betray me. Boo-boo, you're a stand-up guy. Yes, I'm a stand-up guy. <laughs> Boo-boo lost a city, gained a different city. Liu Bei lost a city. And Jan Mao, I think, dead, maybe? I don't know. Oh, no, I gained a city. Okay. Hufu Song, which that's not his real name. Speaking of an officer of Matang. So that's how these plot events work, folks. Hey, Tatsu, something's happening with Puyan, I thought you'd want to know. And also red text and squares. I can explain more stuff. That's good. Since this is the first uh since this is the first time we started a new turn, he's probably explaining stuff. I just realized now, of course, that I didn't do anything on my first turn, and in fact, <laughs> there's nothing I can do on that first turn that will prevent this thing from happening, so my whole thing was I was going to load, I was just going to show you one plot event and then load, but no, we're actually going to have to go through that whole thing again, but what actually happened is I got this city for free, as you can see, uh, Zhu Chu's in charge, Zhu, Zhu Zhu's in charge, because, uh, Bubu came to attack us, but Juju routed them and took his base from him. Good job, Juju. Uh, and then Liu Bei had held two cities, but Liu Bu took one of them from him. Uh, basically because Liu Bei decided to give him some place to stay. And um, that's what's actually going on in that conversation. I was being all goofy and funny, but no, what's really going on is his brothers are like, The fuck are you doing? <laughs> He gave Lu Bu, like, part of his territory to, to rule in his name or whatever. Lu Bu is not really going to be, uh... Lu Bu is going to take advantage the first time he has a good chance to betray Liu Bu, let's put it that way. But it's uh, definitely time to end this video now, uh, so I'm going to end this video. When we come back, we'll have the first proper video of this LP, even though this has been like 40 minutes long, jeez. Uh, but we'll just be down to like brass tacks, regular gameplay. I'm gonna go through the. I'm gonna go back to that first turn and actually distribute some officers and try to get some stuff rolling. Just do a regular first domestic turns kind of housekeeping, and then we'll zip through that whole thing. And I probably won't voice act it all again because I can already wondering if a lot of people aren't gonna be kind of annoyed by the voice acting. <laughs> I enjoy it, and um, we will. Uh, as you'll see, that whole plot event. I didn't pick this because I thought it would be necessarily the easiest scenario. Although it, it'll obviously be easier than starting off against a large force from Dong Zhuo. But uh, no, now that I think about it, yeah, I'm at a really good starting position here. But this game, it is an RTK game. They can go quite long. So I don't have a problem with not trying to win this game starting with the weakest possible starting point in the entire game and overcoming established forces. This game doesn't really give you the kind of tactical variety where you can really overcome being badly outnumbered. You kind of need to... Uh, it's kind of a game. I'm sure people who are better at these games than I am and who are speaking and reading the language the game is actually in could figure out tricks I don't know, but this is very much a game where it behooves you to have the largest force, the most resources, etc. But, uh, like I said, we'll be back to game regular gameplay in the next video on the Serious JG. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you will join me next time uh, when we uh, keep rolling, and uh, I will hopefully get my videos down to the normal length. I'm going to be shooting for 30-minute videos. We'll see if that happens next time, folks. Bye-bye.